G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, I'm pressing on with this uh, LPG um, furnace I'm building out of an old 10 kg gas cylinder. And I'll just do a, a running log on it, so nothing fancy, just so you can see what I'm doing on it and uh, the thoughts I'm having on this, because you know, I'm open-minded on this. got quite a lot of really good comments from viewers and um, ideas I'm kicking around. So anyway, I'll show you what's happening um, as far as putting a bit of a floor in this. I spoke about that in the last video, something to rest the crucible on. We'll look inside. You can see inside there's that steel plate that I showed you in the last video where I've drilled out some of the steel so it'll absorb less heat and it'll still be good enough to stand a crucible on. I did have a comment this morning, maybe you could use a, a fire brick in there, which I could. I mean, I could put a fire brick in there instead of that steel. Um, fire brick won't be as wide. And this I like the idea because it will hold the, it will tend to hold down the perlite or gooby goo that I put in there. It's kind of sort of keep everything in place. A brick could come loose, you know, with expansion and contraction. I'll go with this anyway. I haven't got a fire brick. I've only got ordinary red house bricks, which do stand up to heat pretty well, but I'd have to go and get a fire brick from somewhere. So anyway, here's the plate, and it's just sitting in at the moment, and the, the, the distance is flower pot depth to the top, so that's what I want. So that, that's perfect. Whoops. Whoa, that was noisy. So this plug, yeah, like this, the way I did it. Showing all right? Yep. So that's a bit of old crap steel that I um, machined up and then pressed onto this so I can position that dead centre easily got more to weld or just tack it around the outside edge and then I'll put the plate on top hold it in position and then just arc it around on the inside of the, of the centre hole so that way you know welding it will be easy I mean there's no way you're going to weld it with the, with the, uh, the plate on so we have to put the base in first and yeah as I said this is two pieces so I just have to tack that I mean it's all going to be hidden by um, perlite so it doesn't matter how rough a job you do but uh, anyway that's uh, the current state of play I'll get on with it just before I do I had a couple of comments too about the lid I was originally going to pivot this back have it so it just hinges like some of them do and uh, I got a comment that said why don't you just make it swivel so it, it would basically just swivel around on a pin and uh, that would be simpler so I probably will, will go that way and uh, yeah you wouldn't necessarily have to even open it all the way up you know you could sort of swing it back and leave it sort of in that position and, and still get your crucible out so that's probably going to happen and also the vent. Now I was toying with whether, I, whether I'd put a vent in or not. The previous experience has shown that a vent is a, a good thing, gives you access, you can use it for preheating your moulds and you can bring it up to temperature pretty quick. So I will put a vent in and what I'm going to do, I'm going to use some square section. I'll probably use something like this, which is, yeah, pretty much the right size. And I can just cut out a square section just using the friction discs and the angle grinders, just four down slots and then just, yeah, put it in and, and weld it. And, uh, yeah, so that's, that's what I'll do. I use this for brazing, you know, it's my brazing rest, you know, um, stops heat loss 
But I have got some more of this stuff somewhere. I'll, I'll salvage a bit of that and that's what we'll do with the lid. Then once I've done that, as the, uh, as the metal is going to be coming in like this and it'll be full cut flush with the edge, then I will weld some mesh from the center bit to the rim all the way around, some sort of, you know, reasonable mesh thickness, and then that will hold the insulation gear in place. It can't drop, drop out, you know. There'll be support for it. So it, it, it should all work in quite well. And, uh, yeah, just some square section mesh, pig mesh or something like that, whatever's whatever's lying around and uh, I might have to get a bit from the farm. I don't think I've got any down here, but um, anyway, that's the plan. Well, we've got the plate in the bowl and that all turned out okay. And uh, I just put it in with a stick welder. So I can't do any more on this for the moment. I um, will have to investigate whether I use perlite and refractory cement or perlite and bentonite clay. And I've got the clay but I haven't got the refractory cement so one comment said you know the uh, bentonite clay will work quite well so give me your thoughts on that. Okay I'll move on to the lid now and I'll put the vent in that. So here's the lid. And I'll have to use this because I haven't got any more of this. I thought I did. So that'll go there. Now we just mark it out. And that should be pretty easy to cut out. So we can just use a friction disc, just cut down vertically with it. And uh, that should be a piece of cake. So now I'll just weld it on the inside. It should be pretty well flush on the outside. Well, I've got the vent pipe welded in, but I 
tomato bowls up. I cut it and uh, fitted it, and I thought I'll weld this with the the DC welder because it's not really thick metal, you know, and it looked great. And then when I chipped the slag off, got massive arc blow. I thought, what the hell, dummy? Then I realised this is powder coated. A bloody thing. So I got out the DC welder. That'll burn through just about anything. And uh, I mean, for rough fuel work, AC just leaves DC for dead. Came up half reasonable. It, it won't fall off, and it's going to be hidden behind all the perlite. But uh, the outside looks okay. Once I clean it up, and. Uh, yeah, so I suppose, I hope that's big enough. I think it should be. Like going on previous experience, I I think that'll be okay. If it's not big enough, well, give me your thoughts on that. What do you think it should be bigger? I'm not real sure. The, um, the other furnace works okay with the plate on it, so I think this will probably be okay. I think it's probably be big enough, put a metal plate on it when it's going, and uh, I could even put a little sort of a platform thing on here, hmm, think about it, anyway, that's where we're at, so, so far so good, just that one balls up, but you've got to have a balls up when you haven't been uh, doing anything, so the next thing is I'm going to have to get some mere heavy mesh, cut it to shape and then tack it on each of the mesh bits all around have it le pretty much level with the the bottom of this so then I just fill it all up with uh, the perlite after and it should all stay in there hopefully so anyway we're getting there but I could have done without the, the welding dramas but anyway it uh, It'll look all right. I thought also while I was doing this, uh, I mean, it's got to be painted. So I suppose the only paint you can really use on this is that heat-proof paint they use for, you know, lounge room wood stoves and things like that. Any other paint, and this is the original paint, it's probably all going to come off, so I might have to strip it all back and uh, then paint it again. I'm not sure. It's not going to be a work of art anyway, it only does the job's the main thing, so if it's a bit rough here and there, well, so be it. But, uh, yeah, depends how hot this all gets, I suppose. Oh, well, that's it for now. And, uh, yeah, that's a good, <laughs> a good example of why you should hang on to your old AC welder, because, yeah, when it comes to the rough stuff, you can't beat the old AC. Okay, that's it for now. See you next time. Cheers.